was really delightful to not only read about his background, but to have some time to chat with him um, this morning. I think that, you know, I've seen a lot of people with very diversified experience and backgrounds, but I think um, Tazawa-san is probably one of the most unique. He was born in Kobe and then spent his, his early years um, at school as well in Barcelona, then came back to Kobe to high school and then went to London to finish high school at uh, yes. Wales. Oh, Wales, sorry, at UWC. So just in his early years, he was across, what, four countries or three countries, then went to the United States to UPenn to study where he got a minor in, in art, but also his master's as well. Um, so with that international start, he then decided, I guess, to go into um, consulting, Boston Consulting Group, telling me that, you know, he thought it would give him uh, a good background so he could use that as a platform to do further things and obviously continued in consulting, but had various um, different experiences running a hair salon in Indonesia and also um, um, running, uh, working with a Lumo Labs on a concept of um, a brain, a cognitive training app. He also said he dabbled in robotics before he even got into Boston Consulting. So he truly is quite a Renaissance uh, man. So he's been back in Tokyo 2011 with his new venture, um, uh, BNA um, Company Limited, and um, has a partnership with uh, Mitsui Fudo-san. But when I asked him about his sort of interest in the concept and why he decided to do this, um, he said he stood his first uh, hotel, but the idea of, for him in art is he likes to have fun with art and combine it with the real world, you know, with techno music, alternative art, and create a truly kind of interesting and interactive fun atmosphere. And one of the issues, or not issues, but drivers for the hotels with his partners is to create an environment where kind of cool and trendy people come and help galvanize the environment and um, the the area. So I asked him a lot about how he picked his artists, etc. But he has varied artists. Each room is an experience. There's two artists, I guess, two rooms that are the same. But it's really unique in the sense that each hotel appears to have a different, um, or each room has a unique experience including pre-screening, which he can maybe tell you about for certain guests if he's if you have a room with flashing lights. So in any event, um, it's really a thrill to have him here. I'm not sure we've had anybody that's really combined this type of concept. I think it really is very unique, probably as unique as <laughs> Tazawa-san. So Tazawa-san, we're very excited to hear about your journey and your current project, and um, just welcome. We appreciate you speaking to us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yu Tazawa. Uh, please call me Taz. That's what I'm known for. And I'm the founder and CEO of BNA. Um, BNA stands for Bed and Art, and it's an art hotel uh, chain that aims to empower the local artistic communities. The concept, as uh, Jennifer said, is um, each room is a piece of art. So it's not a hotel room with art but it's a room by itself designed from scratch by a local artist. And when you stay in a, one of our hotels, part of the profit goes to the artists who created the room. So by staying at a hotel, you're virtually becoming a patron. Just um, before we start, a little bit about myself. Um, I was, as mentioned, I was born in Kobe in 1987. I'm 35 years old, grew up in Barcelona. My dad was a Catalan professor, so I grew up speaking Catalan. And if you notice my accent, it's not quite Japanese, it's a little bit more Latin. I'm an avid rock climber, so you'll find me on rocks outside every weekend climbing um, rock walls. I went to United World College of the Atlantic in Wales, and then going to UPenn for bachelor's and master's in electrical engineering and robotics, but I also minored in art. Started my career at the Boston Consulting Group as a consultant, and then left to do uh, other things like so we said country manager at Lumosti, which is a brain training app, hair salon in Jakarta, and so on. And I founded BNA in 2015, uh, so it's, this is our eighth year as, as a company. So um, how does BNA try to empower the artistic community? So three things. 
uh, we offer place, resources, and network for success. Um, as mentioned, our rooms are a permanent exhibition that, uh, to showcase the artist's work to the global audience, but we also open up our common spaces for, as a place for experimentation. Um, in terms of resources, it's not just our revenue share system, but we also host uh, artists in residence programs, uh, mentor programs, and so on, that I'll talk a little bit more about later. And finally, uh, our hotel draws a wide variety of guests from all over the world, many of them with creative backgrounds, and very many of them in, quite influential. We've had a lot of cases where artists got international exposure and opportunities, like commissions or being invited to shows abroad through our guests. Just this week, we have a former Lakers uh, basketball uh, NBA player staying with us. He owns uh, an art space abroad, and we're in talks about collaborating and maybe bringing our artists to Paris. So, how we all started. So, we've, I founded this, hotel, uh, this company with three others, um, Keigo, Kenji, and Yuto. Uh, while I was at BCG, I had a side business on uh, running Airbnb apartments with Yuto. Um, it was profitable back then, about 2012, 2013, but also quite, kind of, it was also kind of boring. So we, you, we just rent out built, uh, rooms, furnish it with IKEA furniture, and just rent it out. And that's when I met Keigo. It's the second from the left. He is a architect, uh, an architect and interior designer from LA. He had just moved to Japan, and his personal mission was to elevate the role of art within the context of interior design. So traditionally, uh, you would design a room or an office, and with the leftover budget, you would purchase an art that goes with the interior design. But he wanted to elevate that role. So back then, he was a Gensler, and he was starting to design offices with art as its centerpiece. So around, design around art. So he was working on the headquarters of Facebook, and he had involved 12, uh, a dozen Japanese street artists and built an entire office around their artworks. So the idea was to combine our Airbnb business with his interior, uh, art, artistic interior design and create something new. So we started looking for a space that we can renovate ourselves. And that wasn't easy, as you may know. Um, finding a place that we can renovate as we like and rent it out. But we, had a, we found a place in Ikebukuro uh, this was a very shady place, to say the least. So it was a 30, 35 square meters um, studio apartment, a studio room. But this room itself used to be a headquarters, an operation point for Ore Ore Sagi. So if, for those who don't know, it's a phone-based fraud business. So we went in to see, and there was you know, a couple of dozen um, burn phones, a bunch of names and phone numbers being burnt in the kitchen. Next door, there's a waiting room for call girls. And downstairs is a Filipino show pub. So this is a quite shady place that we started our, our, our venture. But because it's, it was such a location, we had the freedom to do whatever we wanted to. And that's how we opened our first prototype. We call it the BNA Gallery Ikebukuro. It's a studio Airbnb, 35 square meters. And from the get-go, our idea was that if art was going to create value in this uh, business, we should give back part of that value to the artists who created it. So our revenue share system was in place from the get-go. And as from the launch, this was very popular. It got picked up by um, a lot of major global news sources and media, and also picked up by Airbnb as one of the main rooms for the global campaign. So we had station being wrapped in a hotel room, uh, on an Airbnb room in Australia, all over the world. And we started getting a lot of creative guests from all over the world. But one thing that we noticed is that these guests didn't just want to stay in this room, but they wanted to meet us and the artists. They would see this, the photo of these rooms and assume that there would be a really cool community there. So the thing that we notice, realize is that art is a book cover for our local community. And people would buy the, uh, the book by its book cover, right? But you get there, and all there is are just call girls waiting to be called up. So we decided that our next step would be building something that's totally community-based. 
So what we did, we went around meeting all these uh, community leaders around Tokyo, and we met our fourth founder, Kenji, in Koenji. So he had, he had an artist-run space called Amp Cafe that he had been running for about, for about eight years by then. And we decided to build our next hotel, next project based on his community of artists and creators and musicians in Koenji. So that's how we opened our first actual hotel, that would be in a hotel Koenji, that had two rooms designed by local Koenji artists, a small bar, and a basement for event spaces and exhibitions. So Koenji, uh, if you've never been, it's a beautiful place. I've, I've been living there for eight years. It's uh, very artsy, alternative, underground vibes, a location, just two stops from Shinjuku. We call it, we, we used to call it the Bushwick of Tokyo. And it's where punk, punk music started in Japan. So there's a lot of music venues, and that's where a lot of the young music, musicians, comedians, artists, uh, designers, they all live and strive for bigger dreams. So this hotel was a great success as well, and that's when we started getting contacted by investors and developers and decided to expand. In 2018, we opened BNA Studio Akihabara, which involves five rooms with a co-working space on the first floor. So there was just five distinct uh, rooms by three different artists. So we had rooms by a furniture, uh, furniture artist called Studio Bowl, the upcycling different things to create this park-themed hotel rooms, as well as uh, graffiti rooms by a collective 81 Bastards that involves street artists, musicians, and tattoo artists. In 2019, we opened uh, a 31 room hotel in Kawaramachi Kyoto, BNA Alter Museum. And this hotel has 31 rooms by 15 local Kansai artists with, with bar, cafe, and a gallery called the SCG. So the main gallery called uh, is, SCG stands for the Staircase Gallery. And it's a 31 meter vertical gallery that you can only see by walking up the fire, fire escape stairs in front of the building. So we're trying to utilize a sort of dead space into a gallery. Um, the, the photo you see in the middle, it's called Goen no Ma. And Goen, meaning five yen, means, uh, also means connection in Japanese. So the guests are invited to stick their own five yen coin that they found during the trip, thus kind of making the connection with other guests through the room. Just to give another example of a room in Kyoto, it, this is uh, a room called, on the left, a room called Double Dreams by Sato Sugamo. And it's a sculpture piece that exemplifies the dreams of the guests merging together. In 2021, in the midst of uh, COVID, the pandemic, we opened our flagship in Tokyo called BNA Wall in Nihonbashi we teamed up with Mitsui Fudo-san to open this hotel. This involves 26 rooms by 14 uh, Tokyo-based local artists, as well as a lounge and bar, uh, workshop and atelier space in the basement, and our main piece, which is this big mural that penetrates the first, uh, first floor. And we open, open up this mural for art, uh, Japanese art, uh, for artists, up-and-coming artists to practice and showcase uh, big mural art. So we've worked on a variety of mural projects indoors and outdoors. And one thing that we realize is that there isn't a place, much place in Japan to practice mural art. As you may notice, there aren't that many street arts in Japan. Street art is considered a crime. So you know, certain, when there, whenever there is a big project with a big mural, usually goes to a, a kind of set group of veteran artists that they had their experiences. So it's really hard for young artists to break in. So that's one of the reasons why create, we created this mural. So it's a safe place for artists to, pra uh, to practice the, the skills. We have our cherry picker that's permanently there. So, and at the same time, the guests can witness how a big mural piece is created in front of their eyes. So you see the first floor basement, uh, first floor lounge, and you get to see the, the creation of a mural from a bird's eye, bird's eye view. So hotels also, also features a variety of rooms. So you can see a very futuristic room by Yoshi Ratan to a brutalistic 
room by Kanto Iwamura. So with the, this huge variety of rooms, like how do we select the artists? That's, I get that question a lot. And our concept is that we create communities, not artists. So when we go to a new, new city, we try to meet as many community leaders as possible. And they are the ones who would decide who would bring artists from their own communities that they see fit to the project. There's a couple of advantages to this method. First, we get to reach out to artists that we wouldn't otherwise. And also, these community leaders have a working relationship with the artists, so they will bring out the full potential of the artists for the project. And these are individuals with very different professions like university professor, creative directors, curators, music producers, party organizers, and so on, but with the same passion for arts and community. And this results in a very cross-disciplinary collection of art rooms. So we have music uh, rooms and musicians like the Boredoms or Takamasa Aoki. Uh, we have installation rooms. The second one from the left is a room with a water installation. So half the room is a puddle. Uh, we have digital art, like the one in the middle, by uh, Collective Kono, that uh, involves a digital uh, microscope, with traditional Japanese art, and of course, street art. So what are we trying to achieve beyond um, supporting the, uh, in, in the bigger picture? So one thing that I talk about uh, a lot recently is this concept of project-based community building. So. In my opinion, the best way to bring people together and building communities is to build something together. And our project is a good vehicle for that. Um, you know, there's a lot of different projects. There's business projects, charity projects, and so on. But our, what's unique about the art project is that there's no success or failure. It's a very flat and pure form of creative experimentation. There's no fail, uh, success or failure, but just the act of doing an art project together is a success by itself. So by offering place, opportunities, education, and resources for these creative experimentations, we try to bring people together, help them find a place for them, and get them inspired to take the next step. So I'd like to talk about some of some projects that we've been working, working on recently. Play Art BNA. This is a project that we are running at the basement of BNA Wall um, once every one or two, uh, two three months. We cover the entire wall and, and ground with paper. We provide edible, safe paint and with, with live music, toddlers from age zero to six can just go wild with their own creativities. This has been a huge success. Every time we, we open up for uh, applications, it sells out in a couple of minutes. So we're trying to spin, off, spin it off as a different business by itself. BNA Wall Mural Rookies Project. Um, we've teamed up with Tokyo Dex, which is an art age, uh, mural agency, to create this program to, act, to support a mural rookie to create a six, six meter by six meter mural with the help of a men, uh, veteran artist mentor. So we opened it up for application. Uh, we did our first, tra first run this January. We got over 100 applications. We selected Maria Sakurai as our first rookie uh, with the help of veteran artist Mr. Shibuya she completed this beautiful mural. Uh, this has been a success, and we are uh, intending to do the, our second run next, early next year. Another notable project that we've had last year was uh, Dancing in a Nightmare. This was a immersive dance performance using the entire hotel. We teamed up with an immersive dance crew called Dramatic Dining, and guests are invited to sort of roam around the hotel and witness performances in rooms in the basement. This was a sold-out crowd of over 500 guests with over a dozen shows. Um, we intended to do it again this December. We also run artists in residence programs in Kyoto. So we've done two artists residences so far. We, pro uh, we open up our hotel for artists to come and stay with us, provide funds, team up with Fab Cafe so that they can use techn um, 3D printers, laser cutters, all the resources that they have as well. And future prospects, uh, this obviously this last couple of years has been quite rough for us, especially because our hotels are targeted more towards the Western audience. But um, 
now that we're starting to get uh, international guests coming by, we're getting starting to also starting to get inquiries about bringing BNA outside of Japan. Uh, we'd love to do that. So we're in talks with China for development. There's been inquiries from different other different parts. But if you, any of you have any uh, anybody who would like to bring BNAs to their communities, please let us know, and we'd love to talk. And finally, after this presentation, if you'd like to come visit us, we have a bunch of events coming up that you can join. Just this Wednesday, uh, on April 19th, we have a Matisse's paper cutting workshop with a live model. We bring in a nude model, and it's led by our own artist, Kanto Iwamura. So, this is a very approachable, uh, intuitive way of creating art, and it's a way how Matisse created art at the end of his life when he wasn't able to paint anymore. And this is actually part of our weekly sketch club on Wednesdays that we bring in nude models uh, with good drinks and uh, music, we do figure drawing. April 23rd, we have our play art session. So April 22nd and 23rd. 22nd is our regular play art, which sold out. But the 23rd, it's, we are running a trial in English. So this is not open for the public, but for those of you who are listening today, if you have a toddler that may be interested in going wild, uh, please contact me. I'll send you the link for, to, sign, to sign up. Uh, op applications are now open for our third artist in residence program in Kyoto until the end of April. So if you know any artists that may be interested, please uh, go to the BNA Alter Museum's website for more information. And we have a couple of anniversary events coming up in June, 3rd and 4th in Kyoto, 10th and 11th in Nihonbashi with good music and company. So please come join us. And you can find more information about all these events and more at our Instagram page at BNA Hotel. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, um, Taz. Uh, really very interesting. I was trying to think about how to sum up exactly the concept, but it's <laughs> difficult. I would say that the fact that you aim to create communities um, not artists is probably the biggest theme, you know, and around that theme when you're actually, I'm going to ask the first few questions and take that liberty as the, um, the moderator, but uh, when you think about that and how interactive and community based you want it to be, you've got your four partners, like how do you engage the artists and guide them? Do you give them instructions at all and how you want the room to be or how you want to create the atmosphere? What's that dynamic like? So we, the, the team to create a room, we have an architect and the community leader, who's, we call them the art directors and the artists. So the three of them would discuss different concepts and put it into a room. So the, the architect would be uh, responsible for making it somewhat functional at least, so that you can at least sleep and work as a, for the legal reasons. And yeah, everything else is we let the artists go wild. That's really interesting. And I think when you were talking to me also earlier and you mentioned COVID and how difficult it's been with a lack of, of tourists. And even we were talking about just how these concepts are so great, but can you actually make a profit? And, and I'm thinking, how do you monetize this relative to how do you get your clients, do the outreach and, and bring in the people and sustain that? And what are your plans for that going forward? As I said, um, is it, profit? it hasn't been profitable for the last three years, obviously. But one of the reasons why we survive is that we have really good partners in Mitsui Fudosan and Columbia Works is another developer that we work with. And I guess one of the business models so far is that the communities that we bring is quite attractive for the developers. So Mitsui Fudosan has helped us out a lot through the last couple of years because they wanted us in their area. They invited us to build a hotel in their area to bring value to the Nihonbashi area. And the hotel itself, once it starts running it, it will become, it, it is profitable this month. It became finally profitable uh, this March and April. And I mean, going forward, we have a different, a couple of different ideas on how we can scale this up. Great, well, and I just wanted to thank you too. I understand you give, you give the artists 
part of the, you know, kind of a cut in the in the revenue and, and you give back to them as well. So I just want to acknowledge that that's great and a good sustainability community outreach. So I will end there, uh, Sawako, and just open it up to the floor to anybody to ask questions. Oh, thank you very much. Very, very interesting uh, lectures. And I, I am also a supporting uh, artist, uh, 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 mainly uh, to university mm -hmm. for giving the grant to the, the artist. But how do you choose your artist? Because there are sometimes a demand from the, the, the <laughs> you know, uh, uh, your counterpart to, uh, but I don't know. Uh, uh, artist is sometimes very, very not flexible. So how do you arrange this sort of? <laughs> Thank you. So as I mentioned in the presentation, we talk to the community leaders. And the, these community leaders know the artists. And the artists that they bring in, that they see fit, generally are artists who are more flexible to this new type of project. And that's, I mean, there's been different cases of success, various success, uh, degrees of success, but that's how we do it. And we get uh, proposals from the art, the community leader and the artist, and we select based on uh, obviously the content and the skill set, but also um, about if these are artists with a bright future, and also as a balance overall in terms of medium, gender, and so on. Thank you very much, Taza-san. Michio Nakamoto, I'm a freelance journalist. Um, when you say community, I'm wondering whether you involve the local people in the areas that you have your hotels, mm -hmm. and also whether you, um, most of your hotels are in cities. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking at all of expanding out to the rural areas, which could really benefit from <laughs> this kind of thing? Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we do involve uh, we do involve the local communities in events as well. Obviously, it, uh, to various degrees, Koenji obviously was the easy, easiest part because the local population are artists themselves. Uh, Nihonbashi, we're starting to sort of try to do that. Obviously, it was difficult during COVID, but um, yeah, the play art event is a little bit more sort of open to. I would say more the masses or the less artists, yeah. And we have local people coming with their kids, so that's a way for us to reach out as well. Um, the Wednesday Sketch Club as well, it's something for not just artists, but also somebody who wants a place to learn and express themselves. And, sorry, what was the second question? Oh. Yes, I'd love to. <laughs> After now, um, we started the concept, uh, quite an urban concept of having local actual communities there. But yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, I think there's a huge opportunity in, in space in rural Japan or outside of Japan. And we'd be totally open for that as well. Thanks so much. Fabulous presentation. Excellent idea. So <clears throat> one question I have, and it relates to scalability. So first, you know, how many of these projects do you think you could do in a year, in two years, in three years. And the second question, and since your partner is Mitsui Fudosan, could you not do this in office spaces and private homes and other places, not just hotels? Thank you. Scalability, we have a couple of different uh, kind of ideas on how to make this more scalable. Because current, I mean, I, we do admit that having 15 different types of rooms in a 26 room hotel room is not scalable. <laughs> um, so the project that we're talking with, which in China involves more sort of luxury villa type places. So instead of making more rooms, make the price higher and make it worth the bespoke space. Um, also, we have an idea that we're talking with other developers about making it more, uh, Replic so less room types, but well better design that can be built by builders rather than artists themselves. So, and so that's yeah that's what we're thinking. And what the second question was, office. So we we started by designing offices. So Kago uh, was designing 
these offices with art, and we've done it a couple of them as well. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have projects, we'll be open to. That's not our main business, and designing offices is not the most profitable thing, to be honest. <laughs> But we do creative consulting for that type of types of project. Instead of us designing, we do assign artists and do the concept concept building and so on. Um, we have one question. Uh, we have several questions coming in from our virtual world. Um, but before we go to that, I have one question uh, personally. Are there any artists that you want to work with for your projects? Any artists? Uh, one of the artists I'd like, I'd love to work with. Uh, I've got to know him in the, over the years, but I haven't had the chance to work with this Nishino Tatsu. If you know any of you know know about him, he's a veteran artist. He was known for building these rooms around monuments in cities. So he built a room around the Ma Lion in Singapore, and you can stay. It was like an installation that you can stay. It, it it's it's hard to describe in words, but you just see the Ma Lion and a hotel room around it, he just built it. Um, I don't think anybody could top that in terms of an hotel, art hotel experience. Very nice guy, um, would love to work on something with him if he had the chance. Okay, so we'll go to uh, questions from our virtual world, um, uh, from Heidi-san. Um, she says, I'm wondering what you think about the future for street art artists in Japan. Murals are popular ways in the United States to activate or energize open spaces. Do you think the laws will change to encourage more um, outside art in Japan? Yes. Um, we have a project, we started a project back in 2016 called a mural city, mural city project in Koenji. We've built six or seven murals outdoors in Koenji with the help of Suginami Ward. Um, Kenji, who was who, one of our founders now, is working in the Mural City Project in Nakano with the Nakano Ward around uh, Nakano Station. Um, we got inquiries by, from developers. So this, it, it is becoming a thing, I think, slowly, but surely. Um, are there any works that you're, um, other than the works that you showed us, are there any works that you're, you're, you have on the pipeline that you, you might do for Murals? For murals, Ken, I mean, Kenji's project is not a BNA project, but it's sort of developed out of it. But he's, I think he's secured the budget with, the, with Nakano Ward for five or ten more murals this year. So you'll be seeing a lot of murals in Nakano. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, any questions from the floor? Okay, so there's another question from our virtual world. Um, whereas the artists are interested in opportunities to showcase their artworks and getting their networks, um, do they get enough um, you know, money out of it? Um, how do you decide the prices for the, ar the artists when you work with, um, when you, you um, pr work in projects with them for, for the, in developing the rooms? Do you have like a set price or do you have like a model? For creating the rooms, yes, we pay for, we, we have a set fee that we pay the artists. It's not uh, upfront as well. It's not just revenue share. And obviously we cover all the materials and costs of, for building. And in addition, we have the revenue share system. Is it enough for the big project? I don't know. That depends on the artist, I would say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the floor? Today we have um, a gallerist, we have a curator, and actually an artist here as well. Hello, thank you for the talk. Um, so we actually also run an artist residency in Tokyo, but in Yoyogi, Hachimon area. Um, for us, we are kind of using it as a platform to be an international exchange. Mm -hmm. So Magda is here from Poland, based in London. Um, and we connect them with Japanese artists, which Yusuke curates in our gallery space. Um, do you also have international artists that join your program in the residence or in the mural side? Um, 
for the hotels, we haven't had any international artists. Uh, uh, we try to be, be as local as possible. So uh, Kyoto hotels, Kansai-based artists, Tokyo, uh, Tokyo hotel, Tokyo-based artists. We don't obviously limit by nationality. It just happens to be all Japanese so far. Um, we'd love to do it. We've had a lot of international exchanges back before COVID. We've had installations by international artists from, I mean, the, I think the first installation we had in Koenji when we started was a Paris-based artist. And we'd love to do more, do more of that in the future. As, as I said, we're in talks with this NBA player who has an art space in Paris about possibly doing an exchange. Um, we have a uh, residence room in the basement of our hotel in Nihonbashi as well that we haven't used so far. So we'll have to do that in the future. And then I have two more follow-up questions. <laughs> um, have you ever done any artists' um, residency exchanges? And then also, if you were to expand to another area in Tokyo, where would that be? Uh, we haven't had any, have we had any exchanges? I mean, we've for, we've sent artists. I don't think we've I don't think we had an explicit exchange of we send them and they send us. But we we've, we've collaborated with different art uh, art spaces outside of Japan. Um, if we were to do something in Tokyo, we get a lot of uh, guests asking why we don't do something on the west uh, on the west side. That there aren't any cool hotels in the west side like Shibuya, Shimokitazawa, or the spaces. Oh, so yeah, that would be an option. But again, we'd love to do something outside of Japan or rules would be great as well. So we're, we're open to all different options. And then after China, is there another dream city that you're looking to do a project with? I mean, I'd love to do it in uh, Barcelona would be great for me. <laughs> Mexico City would be amazing. I love Mexico. Um, yeah. Very cool. Thank you very much. So for the for all this expansion program, um, would you be? I, I could see interest both both way. Would you also try to collaborate with local artists? So let's say in Barcelona, uh, working with uh, so with uh, with the local artist community, or would you eventually also try maybe like to export mm -hmm. Japanese artists to different countries? Which could also so it would be different to working with the local community as you're mm -hmm. doing here, but I think in terms of exporting Japanese artists and which are so there's a lot of artists in Japan, so that could also be a way. So what would you be your thinking? For instance, in China, which of the two are you doing? Um, yes, uh, the answer is yes. Sir. I, I definitely like to bring do exchanges in terms of bringing art, Japanese artists outside, so mixing up the communities. In terms of China. It's the development really wants Japanese artists to come. So our initial project will be with Japanese artists, but we would like to kind of get Chinese artists involved at some point as well. It's a more expansive villa type stuff in different uh, cultural developments in old, old cities. So I think initial test run will be Japanese, with Japanese artists that we've worked with before. But going forward, definitely love to involve Chinese artists as well. I have a question for you as someone who supports artists. Tokyo um, is a major city and it's a very wealthy city, but it's not exactly an art hub. Mm -hmm. What do you think the problem is? <laughs> what do you think is needed for Tokyo to become an art hub? Hmm. It's just ridiculously big, right? I think there's little hubs like Koenji or different in different pockets of it. And I think that's the beauty of Tokyo as well, that it's so big, it looks so great, but once you start digging and opening up different doors, there's like small communities everywhere that's like really, really deep. Um, so I don't know if the same time, similar type of sort of art hub is needed in Tokyo, like a gallery district, like uh, in, I don't know, in different, uh, in Europe and the US. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think there there are hubs already. It just artists just know their work. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no art puzzle here. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the Tokyo Art Fair, but uh, you know Tokyo is a really major city. Um, I was really disappointed when Art Basel went to Hong Kong instead <laughs> of Tokyo. Um, any thoughts on that? Not Art Basel, but yeah, art in I, I think the art market in general in Japan is it's. 
expanding, but it's also look, it's looking a little bit more of a, uh, a bubble and how do you call it? Yeah, it's consumed, yeah, it's consumed a lot. And there's less of a depth in terms of um, the collector side or people in general. I think back when I was in Philadelphia, for example, I mean, art is something that was closer to the regular lives. Students would buy art um, to decorate their homes. And there was a first Friday on the gallery district that people would just gather and buy art. So there was a whole long tail market there. And that long tail doesn't really exist as much. And that's something that we should probably grow. And what we're trying to do here at b and is that is getting art out of the galleries and make it in more and more into the culture. So. I don't concern myself too much into the art community here, like the, the art industry here. I started my, I met Kago through Burning Man. We both sort of were in that alternative culture back in college in the States. And we like that sort of mixing of art, music, technology, um, parties. And that was sort of the way for people to get, to get no artists within the play. And that's what we're trying to do as well. Thank you very much. Um, I've, I'm wondering like how you work with the uh, developers and uh, public institutions. I'm sure that there are many difficulties, mm -hmm. but how maybe you could share some uh, experience that how they could help you or how they couldn't help, but uh, you wish how they could support you. Thank you. Um, thank you. So we currently work with Mitsui Fudosan and Columbia Works. So Akihabara and Kyoro uh, is a management contract with Columbia Works. So that was a great way for us to start expanding because we didn't have to, they paid us to build the hotels. We didn't have to put up any upfront costs. costs. So that was very helpful and looking for projects more like that. Uh, Mitsui Fudosan was also, uh, we got invited by Mitsui Fudosan to come to Nihonbashi area to uh, energize the area with a uh, new community. And they've been also very helpful in you know, what they paid for the most of the the renovation of the building. They help us through help help us through the COVID times. So I mean, so far, what they, uh, these two partners done for us has been great, and we look forward to working with more personal partners like that. So you mentioned that um, most of the of the visitors you have in the hotels tend to be foreigners. Yes, on visitors. So one so one question was, what's the ratio between between foreigner and Japanese? Do you think it's just happened to be like that, or was it like an international target of yours? And also, I would think that uh, it's probably targeted toward a younger audience. Um, but I was wondering if you if you had ever imagined like maybe bringing the same concept, but maybe like to a higher end of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, you know, for instance, I was thinking like in the south of France, you know, there is a Chateau Lacoste, so which where they have like luxury hotels and this kind of thing. So you, you could imagine developing the same concept, mm -hmm. but at a much higher end of the price range. So I was wondering if that also was something uh, uh, which could appeal to foreigner or maybe Japanese. Uh, we the initial concept was aimed at the foreigners. Um, both me and Kego come from Western backgrounds, and we wanted to sort of connect the local communities to the world. Um, especially when we started in Kowenji, there was a lot of really cool things going on within the community, but it was kind of a closed community that was not quite reachable from the outside. But the moment that we, we were aiming to use that hotel to bring in people and get so spreading the word of what they're doing. And I think we had a, now Koenji has become a very popular destination. I think we're one of the first ones to put it up on, put it up on the map. As we open, I remember Condé Nast and the Wall Street Journal or something writing about uh, uh, Koenji as uh, sort of a creative hub of Tokyo. And Koenji then was selected one of the best places in the world by I don't remember which which media, one of the big major medias. So that was that was the goal from the from the get go. And obviously, these art rooms are not the most practical things. And we tend to see that 
Japanese guests tend to be more subtracting points from full points, full mark, whereas Western guests tend to be more adding points. So this is cool. There's a lot of shortcomings, but overall, this is great. Japan is like, this is great, but it's lacking this, this, and that. So, so the concept itself, I think, matches better our the Western audiences. And the second question, yes, I think that that makes a lot more sense. Uh, we've come here uh, because we started in a more kind of grungy area of Koenji, and that we had that sort of vision of making a more community based underground kind of vibes. We have hotels that are in that price range, about $200 to $300. But obviously, you're creating an art that one person rents out for the night and offering that in a reasonable price. Of on a business sense, doesn't make too much sense. So yes, the, the project that we're, we're talking with in China, as I said, is a uh, larger villa with an artist. So I think that would be a, a big option, good option. So the two ideas, yes, one is a more high-end uh, concept. Another thing that we're discussing with a different developer right now is bringing this to families. So we have this. Two rooms in Akihabara. Some of them is. So the, the two on, on, on the ends, it's, uh, it's our room with a themed after a park. And after we opened, we didn't have this intention, but before COVID, when we opened it, um, I think 70% of the guests were staying were families with kids. And we realized that the yeah, there's a strong need for families to come, especially our millennial families. They have kids, but they also want to stay in a cool place. A lot of the hotels for the kids' rooms just looks like kindergarten. It's not a place where the families want to stay. So, and this type of room is like, it's, it's a little bit easier to uh, say mass produce, but like five, 10 rooms are the same one, done, done not by the artists, by, but by builders. Um, so yeah, family-based art hotel for families, young families, with programs like Play Art, is another concept that we're working on right now. So bringing this concept but to different segments is definitely what's, is something we want to do. And then one thing interesting that you also mentioned in your talk was that you've done a almost like a play within your hotel. Mm -hmm. I've actually attended Sleep No More in New York once, which mm -hmm. was an amazing experience. It was Macbeth played yeah. live in front of you. The actors can touch you. and you're interacting with them. Um, and I'd love to see that in Tokyo as well. Can you talk a little bit more about this event coming up in December? Mm -hmm. So this is organized by a team called uh, Dramatic Dining, a collaboration with us, BNA. And I've been to Sleep No More. Sleep No More has been great. It's, Sleep No More is a free roaming type of immersive theater. This is a little bit more guided type. So if you know um, Then She Fell, I think it's in, also in New York, I think it was more a guided type stuff. And yeah, they have all these dancers are D-League dancers, the professional dance leagues in Japan, uh, street dancers. And it's a whole story based around uh, Urashima Taro. So they did a, a whole research about the area of Nihonbashi, and they found that there's some roots to Urashima Taro story. And that's how they constructed the story. And yeah, I think each time there's a 30 guests that would go in and they're guided through different parts of the hotel that and different performances happening all at the same time, connecting into a single story. So kind of similar to Sleep No More. And yeah, I think we all strive for that. <laughs> Such a cool experience. I also had another question. I think when we were chatting before about, you know, two rooms being the same, but you know, that you had some rooms with strobe lights and you screened your guests for epilepsy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just curious about these unique experience that they're getting through the art. You talked about the park theme for families. Are you getting feedback that they want to come back and try different experiences? How is that kind of connecting to your retention and their recommending your hotels? Yes, we have definitely have guests that come and stay in different rooms and so they would keep coming back to try different rooms. Um, it's interesting that we get different reactions from different people. I mean, art is an emotional thing. One example I remember is that was quite interesting. 
is the, the installation room with the, the water. So it's the water drips dripping, and there's a micro microphone inside the puddle that would catch the sound and arrange it and modify it. It's, it's quite an interesting installation. It has strobe lights as well. I remember this Peruvian guy who'd stayed with us. He was an art collector and was like, I love the installation, but it gives me flashbacks to the times I used to live in a, a ghetto with waters dripping. So I love the art, but I can't stay in this room. Can you change the room? So we get like different emotional reactions from different people, which is, I mean, what, that, what art does. And it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> we do have a lot of room changes. <laughs> um, Not a lot, but. Uh, so we have another see. question from the virtual world. Uh, this one from Kyoto. Uh, Melissa Linne, she's with the uh, Kyoto National Museum. And she says, by nature, art is not always profitable. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the dilemmas that necessarily arise when making decisions about profit, profitability versus artistic quality? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, we have a set budget, and we, we also have kind of a, a buffer budget, and Kago as a creative director and the architect makes those decisions of where to put that money. But um, yeah, it's something that we struggle, for sure. <laughs> I don't have a, a good answer to that, and it's case-by-case -case basis. Um, originally, um, Taz and we spoke, I think, back in 2020 uh, or 2019 about you coming um, in March 2020 as um, the pandemic was starting here in Japan, um, and it's been three years, and you know we're, we postponed this for three years, and I'm kind of glad to um, understand your journey. But during COVID, what was the most challenging things that you had to go through as a business or owner, and how did you, you know, work with your uh, collaborators? I think the hardest part was people, the team. Um, we did. We were supposed to open the Nihonbashi uh, Hotel before the Olympics in 2020. But obviously, that didn't happen. We delayed it as much as possible. We ended up opening in 2021 because Mitsui really wanted us to open. But you know, they gave us a really good sort of um, help in in exchange of opening the hotel into to 2021. But once we open, obviously, it's the hotel stayed empty nearly empty for a long time. And once, once that happens, the morale of the, of the team on the ground, I think that's what we, what I, what we struggle the most. You know, when you're not busy, when you have a lot of time in hand, you know, that's when rumors start going around and morale is slow. But yeah, I think now that the hotel is busier, I think the morale is high, that I think there's a better team now. But I mean, aside, besides from all the not being on the red, losing money, um, I think people and team was the, more, the biggest struggle. I think we got through because thanks to our partners, as well as, I mean, half, half the revenue right now is in management consulting <laughs> during COVID. So my, I, I use my background for something. Thank you. I've once arranged uh, um, uh, drawing the, the painting as it's at a pediatric ward at the hospital. Pediatric ward mm -hmm. uh, at the hospital, and it was quite uh, quite effective for the children who is ill. and And I think you can have more, maybe not so benefitable, but <laughs> <laughs> another sense. Maybe it's a quite a important sort of part of your your business. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I mean we love working with children. Play art, obviously. Uh, has been great for the team as well, like having these kids come in and just really see them, them really having fun. It's been great. Um, yeah, as, as so, so far we haven't done any charitable work with this project itself, but we've taken it to outside of the hotel, being invited to more public events, and there we offered it for next, next uh, almost free. So yeah, I think this would be a great way to, to extend what we do. To different areas, yes. Wow. Um, 
I think as you've seen with all the questions, Taz, we could continue talking. I really think that your concept is very unique and the way you mix so many mediums with the play art, the visiting artist, the interactive mural, um, it's really quite inspiring. I'm not sure we've had anything presented here that's so multidimensional in supporting the artist, having the community interaction. So it's it's incredibly exciting. And uh, we wish you, you know, great success and hope you'll continue to interact with um, the Asia Society Japan and other Asia societies. Um, and even, I think when we were talking earlier, it seems like this would be a great concept in the U.S. and other places. And so we're excited to see how you continue to expand um, beyond Japan and maybe do the J Japan Western Art Connection as well. So. Um